Hi there, so today I'm going to show you how to make a seamless pattern swatch for Adobe Illustrator that you can use to colour up your um, either your fashion illustrations or your working drawings. In the same respect, this is the same method that you could create a pattern for a fabric to be printed from one of those online fabric printing companies. The um, theory is exactly the same. We're going to create a seamless vector pattern. So what I mean by that is um, if you're at the stage you say wanted to fill your working drawings up with your own fabrics this is the sort of thing I'm getting at. You'll be grabbing your swatch from the swatch palette and you'll be using it to colour in your fabric on your designs and it's as simple as this but what we have to do first of all of course is to create the um, pattern first. So this is not a video on showing you how to design the fabric. What I'm going to do is assume you have the design in your head that you want already and you just simply want to either make the fabric to send to an online shop or you want to put that fabric example onto your working drawings to say show your teacher if you're in a learning institution or to show your clients a mock-up of what the garment could be like. So the other thing I will say is, I'm sorry, I don't have a uh, computer screen video caption monitor, so I'm going to do my best doing it this way. I'll talk you through it nice and slowly and we'll take it step by step. Now you will need to know the basics of Adobe Illustrator, but what I'm going to show you will work on, and I'm going to use CS6, but this will work on any Adobe from CS6 up to the cloud. The theory is exactly the same. Okay, so let's get started. Click on File, New. We're going to make an artboard that is three inches wide by three inches high. You could use centimeters if you want. It's really up to you as long as the width and the height are consistent. So this is the artboard we're going to create our um, pattern in. So go ahead and design your fabric any way you want. One thing you do have to be aware of in earlier versions of Adobe, because we're used to linking files with um, place, that means if you play with them in Photoshop, they are linked rather than embedded. You cannot create a swatch unless that is embedded. So what does that mean in real terms? Well, if you're using an early version of Adobe Illustrator, it means you can't go file place. You'll have to go file open and then find the image you want and then just copy it, control C and paste it on top and then you won't have any more problems whoops, from then on with working with the swatches. So I'm going to start off with just one leaf and one lemon set. If I'll open my leaf, copy it and place it. So whatever you're deciding you want to do with your um, fabric pattern, um, as I said you could send this when it's finished to a fabric printing company or you could just use it to colour up your sketches. Um, you do have to be very aware of direction. Now fabric has a top and a bottom. Um, for a textured fabric that would be called nap, so something like fur, when you stroke it it's got a def different direction, a, a definite direction. When you're designing fabric you have to be very careful that there is no direction unless of course you want there to be direction because it makes your fabric um, less usable. Often you can switch your um, top and your bottom of your pattern pieces around so you need to be quite aware of that when you are designing fabric. So in reality what does that mean? Well it means if we have something facing to the left it's a good idea to do a copy of it and just transform it um, sorry, um, transform it, it's hard to do this all at the same time. You want to reflect it through the vertical as well as through the horizontal and you might also, you have mirror images, and you might also want to turn it 90 degrees or 45 degrees just to make the most out of the use of your final fabric. So I'm just going to copy and paste and with that one I'm going to um, reflect it through the vertical as well. 
so um, and then I'm just going to change around with sizes all I'm going to do now is just create a very quick pattern to show you what we're going to do next okay so this is what I've come up with so far um, don't get too um, worried about this for the first time just just give this a really good go it's a good idea when you're starting to design fabric or patterns just leave the right hand side and the bottom free it's easier to fill them up after because what we need to do is work with all the edges whatever is on this side is going to appear on this side and vice versa this side is going to appear on that side so um, it's easier if you just leave two edges free to start with whatever's on the top is going to appear on the bottom as well so how do we make sure that everything's in the right place well we're going to copy what is here and move it across to here come to your black selection tool and drag a box around anything that is on the side of the artboard we want to copy it so for me that's Control C I think it's command C on a Mac sorry I don't know I can't remember those and we're going to um, post paste a copy directly on top of itself so to, for me that's Control shift v and now we have a copy directly on top we need to move this on the x-axis so what I'm going to do is say object transform move and we want to move that horizontally by three but nothing up and down so zero vertical so once we have a copy of what is on the left on the right and as you see here we overlapped so this is the overlap part here um, we can now move anything within our artwork that is not what we just moved so I can't touch these ones but what I can do is move anything within here like this so go ahead and rearrange things until you're happy with where they are and then we're going to work on the top okay so come to your black selector tool and come to the top and drag a copy a box around anything you want to make a copy of now this one here is actually below the line it's just the overhang that's in the way so I'm just not going to worry about that one it won't affect my artwork so I'm going to do Control C Control Shift V paste a copy directly on top of itself and I'm going to move it down through the y-axis so object transform move we want zero degrees horizontally we don't want to move it side to side we want to move it vertically so we want three inches in the vertical which is the size of our artboard right so let's just have a look at this this one is actually outside of my artboard and it's not going to be any part of the print so I'm going to repeat that and then you need to have a good look around and just check for gaps and just make sure you're happy um, with the way things are sitting adjust anything you might need to I might just bring this one in the teeny bit so it's really up to you um, and this is trial and error so just have a play around and this one here is not part of my image either as you can tell it's on this side so I can get rid of that there's no need for it it wouldn't hurt if you left it in but there's no need for it okay so once you've got everything where you want it make sure your black arrow is selected and we want to group those as one so it's object group okay deselect that now we want to put a background in the background needs to be exactly the same size as our artboard so come to the rectangle tool and drag a box here um, I'll just put a temporary color in there we go okay so this needs to be exactly the same size as our artboard so we're going to use this X Y W H up here our width is our artboard width so that's three our height of our artboard is three and a quick cheat code to make sure this is exactly in the right place is the X Y is half of your artboard size so those are both 1.5 and I need to have my black selector tool to make that work okay so um, make sure when that is selected you have the boxes selected you have your black selector tool and then you can make those work okay so we need to send that to the back so right click transform uh, arrange send to back all right so we have 
a background colour in that isn't brilliant but that's fine for the purposes of this tutorial. The next step is we have to select our group image. We need to say object expand. Sometimes you might need to do that again and go object expand experience. Now we need to create a bounding box. To do this the easiest way is to duplicate the background. So click on your background. We want to copy it, control C. We want to paste on top, control shift V. This bounding box for the purposes of our swatch palette needs to be at the back. So right click, arrange, center back and make sure down here that there's no stroke and no fill. Right, so we are at the time of reckoning. My swatch palette isn't up, so I'm going to go window swatch. Right, so we are almost at the um, time. We're going to see if this has worked. I'll just get rid of this because I don't really, oh no, I'll leave it there for the time being. Okay, so what we have to do is select everything absolutely everything. We want our bounding box underneath, we want our background layer and we want our image. And once you've selected everything with that black selector tool, just drag and drop it into your swatch palette. And I don't know if you can see, it's just popped up here and it says new pattern swatch 10. You can rename that by double clicking on it if you want. All right, so let's see if this has worked. I'm just going to create any size image at all and then um, I'm going to use, there we are, so there is our palette. Now you might see some fine lines in it, that's not a problem, it's a monitor issue um, that would not appear if you had this fabric printed, but we'll go on to that in just a moment. Okay, so to use this as a um, swatch on our garment, um, just find your um, image that you want to fill. I'm just going to copy it over from its original document and pop it in here. So this could be fashion illustrations or um, anything that you wanted to fill in to colorize up. So all we're going to do is um, do, um, it's a live paint. So you need your paintbrush tool, which is in the shape builder tool here, live paint bucket. Click on the um, swatch palette on the palette you've just created and then just go ahead and fill that in. And there is your fabric here. So there is our seamless repeat and um, you can of course fiddle with these but it gives you a really good idea of what your final garment will look like in the fabric you have decided to design. Okay, so I just wanted to show you um, the process on um, something like a clip art that you can do exactly the same thing. So I just wanted to show you how quick it can be to save this file um, to send to a fabric printing company. So here are my images ready to go. I'm going to use the black select button and say object group. I am now going to put in a background colour by putting a box exactly the same size as my artboard. Um, make sure your black selection tool is selected, X 1.5, Y 1.5, um, my width is 3 and my height is 3. Just make sure that black arrow is selected or it will give you a little error message. There we go. All right, so with that black arrow, right click, arrange, send back. Now we need to make a copy of that background and put it on the top. So control C, control shift V. Right, so now we need to um, select that top layer, hold down the shift button, select our artwork, go to your Pathfinder palette, window Pathfinder, and find the crop tool here and click crop and there is your swatch so you can then go file export and save it as a JPEG okay and when we go into that file there you will see you've done it correctly if your dimensions are the same width for the height 
so thanks for joining me i hope you've had some use out of this it really is a nice little way of coloring up your fashion drawings or a very quick way of sending um, fabric to get printed so don't forget to subscribe to my channel or visit my website to buy pdf sewing patterns or view tutorials thanks for joining me see you again soon